Technology has always played a vital role in the development of information management tools and methods. In fact, it has been remarked that the need to store, distribute, and preserve information is a catalyst for technological development second only to the unfortunate enterprise of war making. But if we look at human history from an information management perspective, the advent of recorded history is, in fact, due to the collaboration between information management and technology. Even though the technologies used then were unfathomably primitive compared to those we enjoy today. The earliest information coding technology was the cuneiform system of writing on clay tablets. Tablets were comparatively easy and cheap to create and once a clay document was finished, it could be fired in a kiln to help preserve it. Large archives of clay tablet documents have been found during archaeological excavations. These archives are predominantly associated with royal administrative functions for a kingdom or a region. But even though the technology used 5,000 years ago was primitive, it's amazing to think that the ancient peoples of the Near East had a very modern conception of files, folders, reports, and government documents, just as we do today. Leaping forward now in history, let's briefly look at modern information technology that was popularly used before the computer revolution. Vannevar Bush, pictured here, was a famous information scientist of the early 20th century. With the development of practical, relatively inexpensive microfilm storage and retrieval technology in the 1920s, Vannevar Bush envisioned a way to make the entire library of human knowledge available to the average home through a personal microfilm viewing system, as shown in the illustration here. The notion that microfilm libraries would replace books in the home, school, and office persisted up through the mid-1970s. There are scholarly articles and government reports published as late as 1974 that predict a home education revolution due to the ready availability of publications on microfilm. At that time, microfiche had just supplanted the microfilm reel as the revolutionary information technology of the day. But, as we know, realizing the dream of the home information revolution would have to wait until the early 1980s with the development of the personal computer and, of course, the Internet. But the point is worth taking that technology not only supports information creation and use, but it often shapes how we view information as a phenomena or a commodity. We should also keep in mind that even today, so-called low-technology solutions for information management are still in use and quite popular. How many of you still have a paper card Rolodex, or use a card index, or a paper calendar, or a date book, or keep a paper journal? Some technologies just will never go out of style. That said, we simply can't shake off the fact that information technology in the form of networks and computing systems is irreversibly interwoven into the fabric of our daily lives at work and at home. This diagram by Patrick Cormier illustrates the relationship between technology and information behaviors. Information management functions are aligned along the vertical z-axis of the diagram, while information behaviors and activities are listed along the horizontal x-axis. On the z-axis, we can see the three interrelated infrastructures that create an information producing or using organization. Cormier calls them realms, but we, for our purposes, we'll call them organizations. Information processes, such as we've reviewed in the modules on information lifecycle management and business process management, are one infrastructure. Information systems or technologies, such as the, are the subject of this and the next uh, learning module of the course, are the second infrastructure. And the third are the information environments, which are the personal or organizational units where we create, store, and retrieve information. 
These include our homes, offices, classrooms, etc. Thus, this, this diagram demonstrates uh, very nicely how technology is an integral part of every information producing organization. So now let's look more closely at the field of information technology and how it is managed in support of an organization's business or administrative activities. Within the field of information technology, there are five primary operational domains that are the concern of IT managers. The first is workstation or desktop support, and this includes all aspects of personal computing, including purchasing, installing, and maintaining individual PCs, tablets, mobile devices, uh, making sure that local area networks reach every office, and that every computer is a equipped with peripheral devices such as keyboards, mice, printer scanners, and even things like cameras uh, belong in this category of technical administration and support. The next domain includes centralized resources that excuse me, individual workers use. Application servers, web and file servers are most often maintained within a data center or an engineering hub that is separate in a separate space with separate building requirements from the rest of the organization. This allows for central maintenance and monitoring of critical business systems. Beyond the data center are what we call then infrastructure services, such as network services that connect an organization to the larger internet and include networking equipment such as hubs, routers, and switches. The next area is development. Development is the area where software applications and sometimes hardware devices are designed, created, tested, and released for end users to, to make use of. And of course the last domain is technical administration. Where would we be without that? Information technology generally, generally consumes a significant percentage of any organization's operating budget. So planning, purchasing, contract management are always part of overall IT management. Because information technology is such a resource intensive and costly enterprise, Proper IT planning is essential for any size organization. There are many different types of IT planning methodologies, but in this module we will examine a general IT planning framework that is commonly used among small and medium sized organizations. There are also a variety of software tools that an IT manager can use to aid in planning. For example, the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit is freely available on the web. When installed, it will survey all computers, servers, and network devices on a local network and report back vital identifying and condition information for each. There are also many other tools that can be used. It's important to note that if your organization receives any type of federal or state grants or subsidies, that often IT planning information is required to receive those funds. Research universities are expect to re expected to report IT planning and implementation for a variety of federal programs. The general IT planning process we will be using involves the seven steps listed above. In the first step, we, de we define the parameters of our plan and what personnel or units the plan will cover. The second step is to begin assembling contract obligations, operational cost, and other financial data. At this point, so we know how much it costs to operate IT services for the organization. The third and fourth steps are critical and too often glossed over in the planning process. The third step is to take a census of the individual workers who are covered by the IT plan 
and make a description of what type of computing resources they require to do their jobs. Next, the IT manager needs to talk to the individual group managers in an organization and identify any new functions and responsibilities that might need IT support either now or in the future. And also to see what improvements or new services might be needed to make work function more efficiently in the office. The fifth step is to do a technical inventory of the current IT resources being used. And then the next step is to use all of the planning data collected to assemble a technical and financial picture of what the organization's IT needs will be in the next 12 months to several years. Easier said than done. Once an IT plan is in place, it also needs to be revisited every few years, usually no more than every two years, so that the plan can be evaluated for its effectiveness and adjusted to meet the organization's evolving IT needs. For your assignment in this learning module, you will select a small organizational model. Several types of organization models are provided for you to select from in the assignment instructions that are online. And you will produce two deliverables. The first is a narrative IT resource management plan report, and the second is an Excel workbook with two spreadsheets that detail the information on user needs and IT costs you collected to form your resource plan. This is a simulation exercise once again, so you are encouraged to be imaginative about what IT needs your fictional selected organization might need. Also, I understand that at least most of you are not professional IT technicians or managers, so I won't be grading your assignments on technical or financial exactness. What I am looking for in this assignment is that you each appreciate both the small and big picture with regard to how important IT management is to any organization that produces or uses information. So I would like you all to use this opportunity to explore the possibilities of how technology can aid us in our work. So as I mentioned, there are two parts to your assignment this week. One, your IT resource management narrative report should include, um, it should be a Word document of three to five pages and include six sections, which we'll talk about in a second. We'll look at each section in detail in a moment. Your IT planning spreadsheet includes two worksheet tabs. This is where you will record an inventory of current IT resources for individual users and centralized IT resources in the organization's small data center. You will also be able to record notes on upgrade plans, costs, and schedules on both worksheets. Let's first take a look at the planning spreadsheet part of the assignment. This is a screen capture of one of the two spreadsheet tabs. As you can see, the forms are already laid out with sample data to help you complete the assignment. Just erase the sample data and input your own organizational inventory data. The first worksheet is for use with an individual worker inventory and upgrade plan for each person in the organization. The second sheet is used to identify data center resources like file, web, and application servers and backup systems. Complete the spreadsheet part of your assignment before moving on to the narrative report. As I mentioned, the first page of the spreadsheet workbook is used to collect individual user data. Think about any standard and special purpose hardware and software each information worker in your organization might need. This is a list of the 11 columns on the first worksheet. The work group column is used to indicate a smaller work group of two or more people within the larger organization that you're describing. This, for example, could be a sub customer support team, an accounts management team, uh, accounts payable or accounts receivable team, order processing team, etc. The column for primary workstation should be a short description of the computing device 
that person uses most. Usually this will be a desktop or a laptop computer. The description should include the make, model, and relevant details like processor speed and size of RAM. For example, a good general desktop computer would be a Dell Inspiron 3000 with an Intel i3 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 1 terabyte hard drive. Now, before I recorded this lecture, I just went to the Dell.com website and looked this up under the Home Computer section under Desktop Computers. It literally took two minutes to find the specification for the workstation, so I don't want you to feel intimidated about looking up examples of office PC, desktop, or server machines made by the manufacturer of your choice. You can pick from Dell, Hewlett Packard, Apple, or somebody completely different. It's your choice. The column for operating system should be the version of the base operating system installed on that primary workstation that you just spec'd out the hardware for. For example, a Windows machine uh, this would typically be Windows 8.1 is the most current version of Windows. For an Apple machine, the typical version would be OS X uh, 10.9 or OS X Maverick. Uh, Apple operating systems often have uh, name designations as well as numbers. In your future plans for operating system upgrades, you could specify that future Windows machines will run Windows 10, which is the next version in development now of Microsoft Windows, or Apple OS X 10.10 .10 Yosemite, which is just being released this fall uh, as the new version of the operating machine for Apple systems. Again, a little internet research will help you assemble your plans for hardware and software. Software is a section on the plan and the, the next column that we're discussing right now. Um, and you should pay particular attention to the software column. Ask yourself, will the user need Microsoft Office to do their job? Will it need another type of email client? Will, it need, will they need an instant messaging client? Will the, the person you're Describing the workstation for need any special financial, geographical, or analysis software? Will they need a client application to reach the workgroup servers or databases? Also consider what kind of keyboard, display, scanner, backup device, or other devices the user will need. Next, use the red upgrade columns, uh, I, J, and K. to indicate what hardware and software upgrade the user will need in the future and whether the upgrades are high or low priority. So for example, if the worker you're describing is a graphic designer, it might be important for them to keep up uh, with the latest uh, processor, graphics processors, and display systems. And so that might be something you would indicate on your upgrade plan, is that you always make sure that this user has the most current uh, graphic display capabilities on their primary workstation. The second worksheet tab is to be used to identify network servers and backup systems and any other centralized resources used by the organization. Be sure to describe each resource in as much detail as you can. These are the columns on the second worksheet tab, the data center, data center resources matrix. Think about all the centralized resources you use in your own work. Do you use financial, reporting, personnel management, or other types of specialized database applications? Do you, do you use a SharePoint or WordPress server for knowledge management and file sharing? Uh, do you access file servers or shared drives that um, other workers in your office use? Do you have a shared email and calendar system? Think about the shared centralized resources you use 
and look around the internet for other types of application servers. There are server applications for literally every type of work activity, from project management to creating field reports to geographic mapping to managing digital media assets to statistical analysis and financial management, customer relationship, and many other types of applications that are database driven and are multi-user uh, enabled. Your task will be made easier if you think of all the functions of the work group that you selected that, that they have to perform and then go online and research the type of application services available for each function that the group performs. SharePoint, for example, is a great file sh sharing server for Windows-based workgroup environments, but it might not be the, the right one if you are describing a graphic design firm that uses mostly Apple machines in the office. Remember that server applications can be commercial or fee-based, or they can be open source, which means that the software is free to use, but you may be asked to donate uh, to the software project team, or you may need to pay for su software support. Most application servers require the payment of support contracts or fees for technical support, and almost all commercial application servers will require a contract to use the software for a given number of users. You can generally get an idea, if not exact pricing, for what the total cost of ownership, or TCO, will be for an application server by researching the product's website. Each application server also has a specific hardware and operating system requirements, so be sure the hardware you select to run the server is adequate to the task. Pricing server hardware should be the last step in identifying application needs to make sure the hardware is up to the data center's needs. Now let's move to the Narrative IT Resource Management Report part of the assignment. As I mentioned, there are six sections of your report, and the report should be three to five pages. So the sections don't necessarily need to be that long. They just need to be very concise. Section one of the report should be an executive summary of one to two paragraphs. The summary should introduce the reader, meaning the, the report is for your management in this fictional organization that you've selected. Um, so the summary should introduce the reader to the plan, what the current IT situation of the organization is, and how you hope to improve technology resources in the next one to two years. It should also include a total cost of maintenance and upgrades. Section 2 describes the organization, what the work the organization does, who is in it, and what type of IT resources they currently have. Again, we're talking about two, three, four at most paragraphs, so you're doing a high-level summary, but you want to hit the major points of how many people are in the organization, what's the major work functions they perform, what is the major kind of technology that they need. If you're talking about an accounting office, for example, you might say that there are, you know, 10 workers in three teams and they really just need uh, moderate, uh, you know, powered uh, desktop machines and display devices uh, for their, their uh, financial work. Section three is where you list the challenges the organization will face over the next two to five years. Uh, actually, your scenario um, for this section is already spelled out in the assignment instructions. Uh, if you read them online there, you'll see that your organization is growing and adding more workers who will need more IT resources. So this will help you create a realistic scenario for organizational growth in the type of work group you selected. And that will help you discuss the challenges that growth will pose over time for your organization.
Section four is where you get to inject a bit of science fiction into the report, or at least a bit of future visioning. Think about how your work group could benefit from further technology advances. Could the work group benefit from more automated workflows, from the use of mobile devices connected to an application server, or to an improved user interface on the group's, group's website? Should the group members be using tablets or wearing Google Glasses in five years instead of using standard desktop workstations? Also, how would these technologies improve customer service or group workflow? Imagine the future here and give some examples of what you come up with. In section five, you should briefly translate the data you collected on your spreadsheets in the first part of the assignment into narrative form. Again, this is a summary, so you don't need to recount the data in the spreadsheets item by item. You just want to aggregate the information in narrative form. Briefly summarize your overall upgrade and improvement plans for individual workers and data center resources. Make sure the upgrade plan is easy to read and it's in logical order and above all, make sure it's concise. Section six just needs to be a short paragraph that discusses how the plan will be revisited, reviewed, and updated in the next two, one to two years. It's not enough to just say in the paragraph, we're going to revisit the plan. What I would like is some thought into um, who will be involved in the plan review, how often the plan review will take, um, how, and how often it will occur, how long it will take, and Overall, how changes and updates can be suggested, reviewed, and approved uh, by individual workers and managers as well as IT staff. As I mentioned earlier in the lecture, uh, one part of IT planning that is often uh, overlooked or not executed well is the part where the IT management needs to go talk to people that they support find out what their needs are, find out what their problems are in terms of using information technology, and incorporate the suggestions they receive from individual information workers into their overall planning uh, activities. Now, the benefits of this IT planning process can be realized only when an organization commits to the plan uh, permanently and uses it to communicate IT needs and budget requirements with uh, the overall management of the organization. By creating solid explanations about current situations and future plans, the IT plan can also be used to guide the technology department in an organization in its purchasing and implementation activities. It can also help justify additional expenses needed for technology and equipment and software and hardware uh, with management. 